Welcome to the Hephaestus Challenge right here on twitch.tv slash the Robin Dan Show. I'm Dan, joined by Fourth Oracle. Rob is over there on the camera keeping things going for us. It is the silver bracket. We are coming to you live right before the first matchup here. We have the top bracket for you today. I will go ahead and link this in our Twitch chat room for those that have not seen it yet. Again, we will have the top bracket. Imagine 42 over on his side of the uh, the Twitch streaming is going to have the bottom half of the silver bracket. That's the Anvil side. And in addition, Imagine 42 and Morty are going to be casting the finals of the silver bracket at the end of today and everything that's been going on. Good afternoon to you folks. Again, I'm Dan, joined by Oracle. Oracle, how are you? Not too bad. I finally get to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I needed to. I needed to introduce things. We are we are getting ready to go here. Uh, we have our first matchup all set. It's going to be Overwatch versus Muse. Oracle, what do you expect from these two teams? Oh goodness, Overwatch has been struggling a lot, but Muse has had a lot of difficulty. Every week they've had different people on their ships, and they even have level one who has seven matches under his belt. <laughs> so, what? Yeah, check it out. Boss Pig. Who's, who's Boss Pig? <laughs> I, I, I think he's one of the devs. He's got to be one of the devs. Well, he, he is a muse, so I, I assume so. I just, I've never seen him before. Yeah, well, understandably, he only has seven games. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to turn my in game voice chat off. Oh, dear. Well, Ooh. what are they saying? I actually, I, I remembered to turn it off after yesterday. You don't want to know. I, I just turned it off. Either way, we're getting set up here. Uh, we do have three Pyramidians involved in this one. As it stands, we also have a Mobula flown by Vomac. I've never seen Vom fly a Mobula, so this should be interesting. Also, yeah, they're going a, for. Hmm. Look at this as a point of reference. Lucas, who was with Iris up until I'd say about a month ago, has rejoined Overwatch, and he is flying as an engineer. For the uh, for the Overwatch team, we are getting into it here. Battle on the Dunes is going to be the map. First game of the Silver Bracket for the Hephaestus Challenge. Oracle, tell us about the map. Battle on the Dunes is a really open map. Not a whole lot of cover to speak of, and the sniping matches that tend to go down tend to go down here. Not too much cover. There's a little bit off to the northwest and to the southeast, but mm -hmm. beyond that, uh, most of it is just long-range sniping and trying to use the clouds to approach. We are getting into game here. We will get loadouts for you momentarily. Starting out with the Overwatch side of things, we got the Boopicorn, piloted by Yggdrill. He's going Hades Flak, a solid mid-range Pyramidian build with Carronade and a Flare on the side. And then we have <laughs> the, ban the Bananabula. But the banana bula. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the banana bula. <laughs> it's bright yellow. I've, I've never seen a better excuse for using the yellow dye. Flown by Vomax. We have on the bottom deck Artemis Gat. On the main deck, Flare Artemis. And the top deck is a Mercury. You have those two Artemis for long range and the Mercury for long range as well. I'm just confused about the Gat once again. For some reason. Uh, uh, Fluffy and Vom both like that bottom right Gatling. Anywho, anywho, uh, I I'm talking too much. Go ahead, <laughs> uh, go ahead, Oracle. For the Musasaurs, we have the Fisherman, a Pyramidian being piloted by Bubbles. Yeah, uh, Hades Echidna, excuse me. Hades Echidna, Echidna on the front with double Artemis on the port side. And we have the Songbird singing the song of the meta for us this afternoon with a Gat Mortar being piloted by Kivias. Port side... Flamethrower Carronade. I think I, uh, and I wanted to say, um, I, th I understand um, why they want the Gatling there. It's because they want to be able to deal uh, hull damage, even if someone comes close. So that's, that's true, kind of and with that. once that, once that hull goes down, those Artemis can deal some decent hull damage. They're, they're not bad. They're not good, <laughs> but they're not bad either. <laughs> well, you, you do have the, uh, the what the carrot it's the carronade mm. artemis and yeah. the artemis gets used for close range i mean absolutely can there's no reason why it can't other than maybe a slow rotation speed but beyond that i i, I i'm starting to get it uh, uh starting to get it 
Poopa corn that and banana bula holding. Uh, I'm never gonna get over that name. Banana bula. Banana bula. Banana bula. Uh, that's what we're being told by Frogger. Um, I'm not sure Frogger's right. Banana bula. Banana bula. Banana bula. Yeah, this is what sniping matches become, guys. I'm sorry. It looks like. Well, it's not going to quite be a sniping match. It can't be because the Songbird is a close range build. We have a Hades and Echidna on either side. Those are medium range builds. People try to excuse them as long range builds, but they don't do great. Technically, they can hit from that range, but they're not going to be landing that consistently. Not usually, at least. Both both ships have, or both guns rather, the Hades and Echidna, do have drop offs they need to deal with much, much more than than the other what would be considered long range guns have to, such as the Mercury or or the Artemis. Mm hmm. On a nebula. This is this is going to be uh, something we worry about all day. <laughs> Boobacorn and Bananabula holding back still they are being extremely patient in the situation they do not want muse to get in close because and i think i i think the overwatch team is is very aware of, of what the songbird is doing because as long as the songbird is this far away he, there's physically nothing he can do there's nothing yeah. he can do but as soon as he gets in close like knows what he's doing especially with the brawler ship he knows how to brawl and brawl pretty well so as yeah. soon as that songbird gets in close, I think Overwatch knows they're going to have a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's the only close range ship in this game. And so if Overwatch wants to, they can just stay this far away. I mean, the Hades isn't going to be doing anything spectacular probably, but who cares? I mean, you have plenty of kill potential on the Bananabula. Bananabula. They certainly on the have the firepower to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, the Mercury Double Artemis is a fine kill ship from range, at extreme ranges. And I think, do they have... Okay, so they're going with Burst Ammo uh, instead of Lesmog. So it's not quite extreme range, but it is very long range. They, they can handle things. That, I think that's the important part. Yeah, they're the only ship that can actually manage to get a kill at this range, realistically. It's it would be very tough for the fishermen because of a an issue with how the Hades flak functions. As as much as we say it's an excellent mid range ship, as soon as you pass mid range, the time between armor break and when you feel comfortable firing the flak gets too long, and you're giving ships a very big window to get the armor back up. Yeah, definitely. I don't think even with Lesmok, the Echidna can't land shots in this range, well, we're, but we're Overwatch is moving forward. It's certainly it, like the Echidna is actually out of range of the of yeah. the Corn. Uh, my question is, what are they running on it? Lesmok, it looks like. Haiti is actually landing decently well on the Fisherman. It's a little bit too low. It's going to have to move sometime soon. There we go. Yeah. I, I can't say I'm a huge fan of the positioning of the Fisherman. The arcs of yeah. the of the Hades are going to be very easy for the Boopacorn, as long as the Fisherman stays a little low. But Boopacorn looks to have actually dropped in altitude, and Fisherman is in turn rising up. For the Hades, for the Hades, it is an easier time to hit a target that is below you or or of lower altitude in some way. Now By you far. may hit the balloon a few more times, but the arcs are so much easier to deal with. Hmm. Absolutely. Songbird's risen up. It's saying hi. Fisherman, I think, is just afraid to be too far away from cover. Plus, it's... I think it was able to drop below the sandstorm, maybe? Just a little bit. Yeah, I think it could when it was rolling by. Not like it matters that much at mm -hmm. uh, this range. Because, I mean, what's going to get damaged? Well, your forward guns, which you can repair immediately, and the engines, which you're not using very much anyway. Yeah, that's that's very true. We're not going to see a ton of piloting tools, at least right now, in this game. As soon as we get into brawl range, the pilot tools will come out, and we'll see a lot more active use of them. But for right now, this is mostly the gunning that's that's really starting to shine. Because for, for long-range builds, you have to have people who know the exact, and I mean exact, arcs of a weapon, and exactly how the shot Re reacts 
to being fired at certain angles. It's it yeah, can be definitely. so hard. Yeah. Muse is going to scoot out of here, it looks like. They're just uh, saying, you know what? We could hang out here and get pounded, or we could just leave. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it's very reasonable as Muse that they would want to drag Overwatch around the wreck because it's automatically going to not Overwatch up. It's going to get them tied up in a possible close-range situation because as long as, you know, they're, they're hiding close to the wreck, it gives uh, the Muse team a little bit of a shadow to hide in and an angle to work to get their meta minion in range. But it looks like Songbird has since ventured forth out into open air and is just they're drawing a lot of fire though they're not getting hit by a ton of it i feel like songbird didn't need to move out like this it, it could have used the clouds but now it's exposing its its uh, uh -oh. starboard side that easy to hit side uh oh see yeah you see it this. this is uh this is not what they want to be doing their engines are disabled are those the yeah those are the turning engines they're, and they're gonna the engine column over and over. This yeah, it's rotted, rotted beef on the Bananibula with a Mercury. Mercury, a very solid long-range weapon, able to easily pick out those engines on the Songbird. Rotted beef just having a field day with Oof. the field gun. Oh my and goodness. Oh. Was that the he yeah heavy engines down on the Songbird? It's going to be so hard to keep those engines up now if they keep pounding away. Hades coming in. Hitting that starboard side, no problem. Hitting the armor, and the armor is slowly burning away. There it is! Permahole damage finally going down on the Songbird, and it's already brought down to half. The long-range firepower here is excellent. Absolutely on point. I mean, this is this is the power of Merc Double Artemis on a Mobula. Mm -hmm. Songbird rising up, trying to dodge a little bit. Armor comes back up just in time, but I don't think it's long for nope. this world. Oh my good, they have a Whoa. sliver of oh. all left. <laughs> there we go. No, huge mistake. They absolutely could have used the clouds if they wanted to, but they didn't, and they paid for it. The clouds are all over the place on this map. They move around. They're, they're so big and encompassing. It's really easy to hide in them and move with them. Uh, at this point, though, Fisherman just needs to protect itself. They need to be careful because a second death in this situation in something that is most likely going to be a long and drawn out map, Eric there, uh, not Eric, I'm sorry, Bubbles, uh, bumping the ribs there. Just He's okay. Bit. But as I was saying, on, on, a, on a game like this, it's mostly going to be drawn out, sniper-esque, and probably going to go to the time limit. Every kill counts, even... A single kill, like we have 1-0, is automatically going to swing the win in favor of Overwatch and have them move on through the silver brackets, knocking out Muse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all comes down to this, and Muse cannot afford to make those kinds of mistakes. Of course, the reason that Muse is so terrified and the reason they've been terrified this whole game is because I'd say the Merc double Artemis is the most reliable damage output you can get in the game. Like you know that if you try to approach, you're going to be taking damage. And you can assume about how much, and that amount, you know, and you can assume how much that is over a certain distance. And that, that amount of damage over the distance on Battle on the Dunes is massive. It's so hard to close distance on a Mobula like this. And considering one of the Muse ships, the Songbird, is a Metamidian, which is only useful in very close ranges, yeah. I think it's put the Muse team at a direct disadvantage. I think it was a bad decision. This map needs medium to long range. What I, is I Fisherman doing? Charging in. Oh my Starboard God. Side, open to the Boopicorn. Banana Bula, uh, that name, Banana Bula. Having trouble though. Hull wow. brought down to about half. The shots are not accurate enough from the Boopicorn or the Banana Bula. Here come the Echidna shots though. Armor not up yet. There it is. The balloon's down on the Fisherman. Armor getting shredded again very easily. Echidna comes out preemptively, but the armor is not down. There oh. it is. Hades going to finish it up. I'm surprised that uh, that the fisherman managed to get that much hull damage on the Banana Bula. I cannot get that name right. Banana Bula. 
Songbird firing out Gat shots. Songbird's coming in. It's charging. Full I... steam. Why? Why? <laughs> Don't do this, Kivias. It's not this, worth it. This isn't even a meat grind. This is charging and what like this is like a meat grind is someone dies the other person spawns in charges it in you know right as their ally dies this isn't even that armor down oh Go before not man. too much trouble with this i don't think songbird kid, just, no. songbird evaporates mm -hmm. oh. that that went about as expected yeah as as much as I love to see that true aggressiveness happen, it's just uh, as a Metamidian, if you're charging two mid long range ships, especially if you're charging a Hades flak that is pointed directly at you from mid range, you're just doing it wrong. It doesn't work. Well, I feel like the Musasaurus put themselves at a pretty big disadvantage from the beginning mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, the Metamidian is only okay in specific circumstances, um, but I'd say it's even more difficult to get it to work against a Hades, or not Hades, Mercury Double Artemis Mobula. Yeah. That's got to be the most yep. difficult as long as it can place itself in a good position. But the fact that it has a Hades Echidna to assist it against a pair of Pyramidians is, uh, is really difficult. I mean, part of the reason the Hades Echidna became popular in the first place was its effectiveness against pyramidians because you fire the hades there's no risk of hitting the balloon not really so it's easy to hit that hull and so it's it's if you think about it that way it's a counter to the pyramidian mm -hmm. and it's you have so two easy. pyramidians charging yeah, it's so easy to hit the come, hull though. of the pyramidian fishermen coming in there hot and fast the songbird right behind them overwatch appears to be splitting the fire up just mm -hmm. a little bit to try and keep themselves safe, but the Songbird doesn't have nearly enough pressure on it right now. It is moving it is. hot against the Bananabula. Oh my goodness, the Songbird losing Oof. armor. Bad. <laughs> oh, man. Bananabula rising above there, still drawing back. Boopcorn having an easy time dealing with the Songbird. Black shots missing, though, going wide right. Boopacorn is starting to feel the pressure just a little bit. Armor could go down here, but Songbird's losing it. He has just a sliver. No oh, the echidna, late again. This echidna is just not getting time the way it needs to, but it goes down anyway. Songbird picks up the kill. Bananabula in a bit of a tough situation. Fisherman looking to try and hit that hull, but what can it really do when it's this close? Boopacorn has not easy gonna happen. arcs. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. Bananabula throwing out a little bit of Gatling, but I think they're just on tank right now, trying to stay alive. Now there's the Gatling. Armor down. Artemis and Echidna going to rip through that hull. 5-0. to oh. Overwatch picks it up. There you go. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, I think there was a mismatch scenario with with Muse taking that meta minion into this fight. It's just, it does not work when you go up against these mid to long range ships. And you cannot get into brawl range. If you're not going to use the clouds to get into brawl range on dunes, it's not going to work. It's yeah, so I, I feel like I was a little bit harsh on the Metamidian on this map. Like, it, it can work. It's just difficult, and you need to use the cloud cover. Mm -hmm. What little there is. I mean, there's really no other option. You saw in that, engage, that last engagement, Muse actually managed to close distance. Mm -hmm. So it's possible... Uh, and But they closed the distance using the clouds. You saw the Mercury and the Artemis oh, wasn't yeah. actually firing on uh, on the Muse ships until they got in you know, decently close and they couldn't do much about it. But the other times they just didn't use the clouds. I mean, that's what happened with the first death when um, the uh, Songbird went down. Mm -hmm. That's going to be that, though. Muse gets Whew. booted off the oh, island. Yeah. That was that was fast. Because <laughs> it's a survivor. That was that was a lot faster yeah. than I thought it'd be. Well, Battle on the Dunes tends to go either very quickly or very slowly. Yeah, that's true. With that being said, folks, we're just gonna take a short, a short timeout, a short break, and then get set up for DPA versus the Clamor. We'll be right back, folks. Do not go anywhere. You're watching Rob and Dan.tv slash live. 